Welcome to the Performance Plastics Podcast, hosted by IAPD, the only podcast dedicated to providing you information and insights into the world of engineering grade plastics and how they benefit society by improving the quality of everyday life. Now, here's your host, Kylie Canty. Welcome back to the Performance Plastics Podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Canty, and today I am joined by the one and only Chad Gono of Regal Plastics. Hi, Chad. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. Do you mind just giving a little brief introduction to yourself, um, what kind of company you work for, um, maybe a little bit about your personal life, a fun fact? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, Regal Plastic Supply, you know, my grandfather started in 1971. Um, so, you know, I grew up in the in the warehouse, you know, just literally trying to find anything to do that would pay money in the summers and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I've, I've been around the plastics industry, you know, pretty much my whole life, you know, third generation now here. My parents took over the company in like 97 and then I started working here in 2013. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, love, love, love this, love the company, love what we've done here, just uh, in regards to culture, you know, values, people, you know, work doesn't have to suck, you know, that's, that's our crying passion over here. And so, you know, that's, that's what we like to do here. We just say, hey, you know, what we do, you know, we sell plastic, but that's pretty boring. What we really do is, uh, you know, create a lot of love uh, in the world and, and and a lot of love at work and and try to send our people home like as being the best version of themselves so they can go touch their families and be the best version. You know, that's really why we we do it. And it's far more important than like what we actually do. So, you know, things about me, I got three kids that are really little right now. So that takes up most of my time. Um, but yeah, you know, just uh, love, love, love this whole work thing balance life thing and it's and it's been something that has uh truly like added so much just to my life and so i love to share what we've done here um and hope that maybe somebody's out there saying hey um i'm in a similar situation you know maybe i've been through something or experienced something that could help somebody and so you know that's really what it is and 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 anytime anybody wants to ask about work doesn't have to suck or culture i love to talk about it so that's what i got on that (laughs) <laughs> no, that's, that's great. And I, I mean, it's kind of no secret, like a lot of our um, industry follows you on LinkedIn and you always have these really impactful messages, but um, I, I feel like what kind of sets you apart from anybody else that is posting things like that on LinkedIn is you always use stories to tell it. So mm-hmm. you're like, Hey, take, um, John Smith, John Smith started working at Regal Plastics in blah, blah, blah. And he's worked his way up or, um, you know, I've, I've seen him get married and I've seen all this stuff happen. Um, and I think that's what really gets your message across is just that genuine storytelling. Um, but I, I really am curious to hear about kind of the process of how you redefined culture in Regal Plastics, or if that was something that was always there or, um, what kind of inspired that change? Yeah. Well, then I was like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, dude, I've got, I've got so many stories like right here. Oh my God. Like we literally like are, cause you know, we're trying, we, I'm not going to get into it. We're trying to create like 500 stories in the next 10 years instead of a revenue goal. Like, that, like it's these stories. Oh, that that's so to, cool. Yeah. I mean, we, we thought like, okay, like revenue goal, profit goal in 10 years, everybody has that, but it's like, dude, if we hit that, but we weren't like making like meaningful impact on people's lives, like would it really matter? And so it was like, no, like the actual purpose of this company is actually to create 500 stories in 10 years. And then, I mean, we'll hit you know, revenue number, profit number. If we get close, that's fine. But this, you know, is the primary objective of the organization. But no, like, like going back, when you go back and it's like, I remember Nick Gross um, and I sitting in, um, we were getting mentored. We found, I had a mentor of mine, Mark Connolly, who I love. And he got me, we were like, we don't, we don't know anything about operations. Like we didn't know anything. I don't know anything about anyways, anyways, but like, I definitely didn't know anything about operations. And we're like, let's find a, a VP of operations. That's bad at, you know, that's awesome. And so we were like, okay, Steve Schneider was this guy. He was like, he's basically like VP of operations for this like 350, $400 million company here in Dallas called DW distribution. And he came over and 
he would mentor me and Nick, you know, every like two hours, for like two hours, you know, every other week. And we would just sit there just blown away by this guy and just all of his knowledge. I mean, he had built a company from about 13 million to a hundred million on his own. And now he was doing this. And so he, he was just an exceptional human being as well with a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. And Nick and I, that was when we learned about um, Jim Collins and good to great built the last great by choice. Jim Collins ended up now he's like, I mean, he's like my literary hero, but you know, in good to great. And then he recommended that book during those sessions that he had with us. And that was really where the philosophy, I guess, kind of started with Nick and I just talking after reading good to great. And it's like, dude, like, like built to last good to great talks a lot about core ideology and like having to have a purpose like, dude, like, what is the point of all this if you're not doing it for something bigger, something more impactful for other than just like just what you do, right? Like, like it's one thing if like you're, a, I mean, if you're a doctor, you know what your why is. If you're a teacher, you know what your why is. If you're selling plastic, you know what? And so we were struggling with this at the time. And I remember we, we read that, you know, and then we re- went on from that. We read Simon Sinek's like, start with why, you know, he's very, you know, purpose driven leader. And it's, we started getting to the point where like, dude, we've got to have a purpose. We've got to get some values. You know, we've got to, we've got to figure this thing out because, you know, just selling plastic, I mean, that's, that, that doesn't get us necessarily excited. Doesn't get us pumped. What else, why else do we exist? And so then, you know, Jacob Mydell, our CEO, like Nick and Jacob and, and me, we really just came together over the course of time with our other coach that we started and we just started working on this with the leadership team. And it was just the leadership team. It was, just, it was not like, it wasn't me. It wasn't, it was us, you know, just like going to battle all the time in our quarterlies and our annuals. And it took, I mean, two or three or four years to figure out why we actually exist. Like we asked these questions, like what, what, why do we exist guys? And it, it was a battle because we were like, this is not it. It's not it. It was close. We had exist to improve. It was close. It wasn't it. And then we ended up, you know, hitting on it. And I think I remember in one of those sessions, Jacob Mydell, he was like, dude, it's just like, it's like work doesn't have to suck, man. And he's like, he just said it. We're like, dude, that is it, man. Like, that's it. That's what we're all about. And so that was really like the way it kind of, it was like, it was from Jim Collins. It was reading about all these amazing companies. And he's like, dude, you have to have a core ideology. Like, look at, I mean, all Jim Collins does is study the greatest companies that ever existed. He's like, dude, like, these companies all had a core ideology. Like they all had values and purpose that were way bigger than what they actually did. And that's what they all have. These great companies that are all similar, that all went from good to great. They were all built to last. So we knew that. And that was kind of the journey that we went, we went down and it was just the, it was a constant struggle. It was a lot of like battle in those rooms trying to work on it. And it took, I mean, it took years to come up with it, always tweaking it, exist to improve, then the work doesn't have to suck, tweaking the core values. First we had five, then we had four, then we dwindled it down to three. But like, that was really, it was such a big deal for us to like, I, we just knew it had to be real. It had to be right. It had to be authentic for us to ever do all this other stuff. And so, I mean, that was kind of the journey. Mm-hmm. No, that's incredible. I, I love that you brought up Simon Sinek too. I just had to read some of his material for um one of my classes, but I, so, how awesome is he? It's great. Yeah. It's I mean, for a class I don't particularly love, but <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was interesting material to read. Yeah. Um, I am curious. I know you said it, this has taken, you know, years and I'm sure it's a constant thing that you're always working on. Um, do you foresee, you know, with an emerging workforce of uh, Gen Z who are kind of expecting more out of their workplace and wanting to have a purpose and not necessarily just like sit behind a computer and, or, and do something or m- kind of like mindlessly work in a warehouse was, was all this change sparked by wanting to cater to the younger generation? Um, how do you kind of foresee going forward, how your um, culture is going to impact the retention and the attraction? No, no, no. And I think that's okay. So like, and that's the key is like, you, you can't do it and let, like, you can't, and it sounds right, it's like you can't do it as a leader unless it's authentic in your heart. Like you're right, you can't be like, we want to create this purpose or this value because we want to get the best talent. We have to retain the best talent. It's like, no, like you want you create the purpose because you believe in the purpose with all of your heart. You know, you create the values 
because those are values that mean so much to you and it has to be real and it has to be authentic. And if it's not, it's just not going to work. It's just going to be on a plaque on the wall on your way to the restroom. And nobody's ever going to talk about it. It's not going to mean anything in the organization. It's just going to be words that we talked about five years ago with some consultant that came in. It ha- you have to really like, it has to really be something that like you as a leader and your leadership team, you all, you guys all feel passionate about. Like that's, that's the biggest part of it um, that I always tell people like more importantly than everything is that. I mean, it's it's got to be it's got to be who you are. You have to struggle with this. You have to really believe in this stuff. If you just use it as as something to attract people, and they're going to see right through it. I will say this, and and one of the one of the the advice out there that I give people all the time is when we write ads, when we write ads for um, you know any job posting on Indeed or LinkedIn, we lead with the purpose. Like I don't talk about job responsibilities. No, we want you. This is what you do. This is what you need to do to be successful in the job. We lead that entire thing with who we are, what we believe. And we're like, dude, you know, this is what we are. We, we believe in the tough talks. We believe in being real and putting everything out there all the time. We think humility is important. We think that attitude is actually more important than the resume. And like we say all this stuff right at the very beginning of the job description for the ad. That right there. I will say that 90% of the times I've been doing interviews this last quarter because Olivia was on maternity leave and she's been working, she's in charge of our recruiting. And so I, I just, I jumped in and I've been doing it for the last quarter. And when I, I've probably done 200 interviews this last quarter, um, every single person that I interview, I would say 90% of the people that I interview were like, I applied for the job because of what you guys said at the beginning about your purpose, what you believe. That is the reason why, because no one else does this. Everybody else sits in these interviews and they're in their suit and tie and they ask me the same baloney questions and it doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem authentic. And then you guys lead with this. And then I've got, you know, I've got you coming on here. I saw your LinkedIn video, like this pumps me up. And it's like, you know, it all just works and it works and it's, it's a lot of fun, but I recommend, I always tell people all the time, like, man, when you write a job description, don't, you have to stand out and like talk about why you do it, not what the job entails, because that's what people are attracted to far more than, you know, whatever you need them to do. So that would be my answer for that. Yeah, I love um, in your preparation, you know, because we were going back and forth on thoughts um, in one of your um, notes, you said, I just sometimes will turn the resume completely over and I don't even look at it. And I just ask them about themselves and what what drives their passion and I totally agree. I think um, looking at it with the correct mindset, that is, that's, that's the investment is looking at it with the correct mindset, knowing what your purpose is, and then just having that show for itself, not necessarily going into it with the objective objective of we need to attract the top talent. So we're going to X, Y, Z it's no, we're going to X, Y, Z, and then we will attract the right people. Yeah, um, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really great philosophy to live by and um as I we mean, go I to ever, i don't think i ever look at the resume i mean honestly i mean I, I mean it's like i mean obviously when they 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 to get the interview you're looking at the resume you're making sure they didn't have 27 jobs over the last three mm-hmm. years but like past that it's like dude i don't need to talk about this i see this i can see it like let's <laughs> talk about you right let's talk about you let's get to know you and and that has been very valuable to us because i mean it's it's, you, you know, you know, you got somebody that lines up. We always say like, we want somebody, are they one of us? Are they one of us? You know, it doesn't matter what your values are. It's that you have values. Everybody's going to have different values, but we have these three important, very important shared values. Do you believe in the values? Do you believe in our purpose? That's more important than anything else on the resume. You're going to, you got in because the resume, we're just seeing this, but it's not like, I mean, it's like, eh, have you been a, like, we just, we just hired somebody that's just been a bartender for the last four years. Great rock star amazing attitude is through the roof doesn't doesn't matter we'll teach you the stuff so sorry for interrupting but i had to say that really really passionate about that part (laughs) no no i i love it and i mean it's uh so you know timely and everything with i mean we're not the only industry that's impacted by um you know having a hard time uh, attracting people or retaining people um but it is something that i feel like has been kind of a constant for the performance plastics industry uh 
but I'm really curious. I know that you spend a lot of time one-on-one with your employees, checking in on them. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have any like actionable things that somebody could do right now to make their employees feel appreciated? Or, you know, there's always jokes online that's like, oh, our boss gave us a pizza party, like, (laughs) yay. But I, I see that you, you, you talk so much to the relationships that you have with the leadership has with their employees. How Mm -hmm. do you make somebody feel special or make them kind of stay and want to have that purpose with you? Yeah. Well, it, you know, like we always say, we always say we live in a 90 day world, which means, you know, you know, you, you come together, you know, every single 90 days and, and you have those, those conversations, you know, those chats, those, those two hours off session. And I'll tell you a little bit about that when I get done with this, but like we say 90 days and then, and then you you meet right 90 days and then you say break, and then you start to separate a little bit, you know, and then, you know, every single day, you're a little bit further apart, a little bit further apart. You got to get back together every single 90 days to make sure that you're on the same page. That's just, I mean, that's just human, right? I mean, it's just, it's just that simple. And so the actionable things that we do is we do this three ways. So all, so we have a, we have a, we live in a 90 day world saying this, we have a, an executive leadership team and we obviously, we meet quarterlies to go over our goals, go over our big priorities. Did we achieve those or did we not, did we not achieve those for last quarter? You know, did we hit our, our, our main objectives and whatnot, whatever, let's go through issues. We meet all day offsite, blah, blah, blah. But the key is this too. Every single one of our branches also meets, also has a leadership team that meets every single 90 days. And Jacob Mydell, our CEO, is rock star. He's the person that's implementing those. And they do the same thing. Okay, how did we do against our goals? You know, um, did we hit our main priorities, our big rocks from this last quarter? They go through issues. They set new priorities for the next quarter and they break, right? 90 days. And then they say break and then they, they, they go, right? At the same time, so we've got it from an executive leadership team. We've got it at a branch level leadership team. But then also what we're saying is that also applies to the individual. So as an employee, every single one of our employees, 90 days, you're coming together with your boss offsite and you're hanging out because you got to get on the same page. And we're just saying it's not a performance review. It's just like, what's working? What's not working? How are you? Like, What's going on in your life? Like, how are the kids? What have you been, have you got new hobbies or anything like that? We talk about core values. We talk about, you know, just anything that we want to talk about over those course of those, like, you know, sometimes there's some stuff like, you know, you need to get off your chest and there's some time get, here, here it is. It, it presents an opportunity for that person to be able to have that type of talk. If they need to have that talk with their boss, like, dude, you know, I'm really frustrated with blank with my job. It gives them the opportunity to have that talk with their boss. And so what we do is we say what's working and what's not working on both sides. So both people get to talk about what's working and what's not just the boss, right? This is not working. This is not working. It's like, no, we want the employee, like, you know, you rock star teammate, tell your boss what it is that they need to do to improve. Because like, they're also somebody that's like, you know, I'm, I'm a humble leader. I want to get better. You know, I want to hear, I want you to give me criticism on how I'm doing as your boss. It's back and forth and it's both ways. So we do that as well. And then, so that's every 90 days. And then I go around each one of the locations and I do what's called a state of the company address. So state of the company address, I, it's not just everybody on zoom, but it's, I go to each branch. We sit down. I'm not standing up and making some speech. We're sitting down all close together and we're just talking about, guys, this is where we are. This is where we've been. This is where we're going. Let's talk about some learning lessons, some lessons that we've learned over the course of the last quarter. Let's talk about successes. And then we end on a whole lot of like core value stories. And like, I mean, we had one in Dallas like last quarter that literally lasted like, this thing was supposed to last two hours. It lasted like three and a half hours. I couldn't get the, like, it, like eight people cry. Eight people cried. These I couldn't get them to shut up, stop talking about like how much they love each other. Yeah, you because know, at the end they're oh. just like, man, like I just love you, man. But it's like that's the real talk. That's the stuff that actually matters far more. I mean, we shut the doors. Like we we closed early at two. We sit in the back. Like we're like no sales. Don't care. This stuff is more important. And so the value with that is the ninety days. We're connecting every ninety days, right? We're connecting as a leadership team every ninety days at the branch level, at the executive level. 
We're connecting one-on-one -on -one with every single employee every single 90 days. And they're also connecting as a team every single 90 days, all of us together in a room. And we're just, and we're and back and forth. It's not just me talking. Everybody is sharing that right there has helped us immensely. And we've been doing it for about three years now. And I feel like a little of course of the last like year and a half, we started to really hit that cadence where we've really done a good job of it. So highly recommend that, that I would, I would put in action tomorrow. And again, this stuff doesn't cost any money. All it does is cost time and energy and passion and effort. Like that's it. It costs $0 to be a healthy company. Yeah. It costs $0 to check in. And I mean, nothing is better than, um, I mean, uh, nothing is better than like community, you know, yeah. and by having you guys all come together, that not only refreshes the core values in you, but then, you know, you see other people get excited and you see like your leaders get excited and it's all, it's all exciting to be a part of something that's bigger than you and making that clear that, you know, we're all in this together. And then I love how you mentioned too, about the offsite check-ins with your boss and doing them so frequently, it really creates a channel for people to be open and honest and talk. And they, they, they do feel like they can talk about what's not working instead of like being afraid or being closed off. It's like, Oh my gosh, I haven't talked to so-and-so in like two years. And now they want to take me out to lunch. Like, yeah. this is terrifying. Like, yeah. you know, hundred yeah. percent. And some people, they're not, they're not the type of person that's going to do it in a group setting. They, they, they're like, man, I'm just not, but one-on-one -on -one, they'll open up. You got to get people, you know, there's many different ways to be able to open up as possible. Yeah. Um, a couple of questions that I had, um, I know we kind of covered a lot of stuff already. Um, one question that I, I was really curious about is, you know, we, in this industry, um, we've obviously been around for a very long time. Some people just don't have like the empathy or compassion and just, there's just some leaders that, um, just lead that way and it works for them, you know, and maybe it's not sustainable. Maybe it adapts over time. Maybe it changes, but do you think that the compassion that you lead with is something that you can teach or, um, do you think that, is it going to be like a wake up call for some leaders that may be a little bit more rigid? Um, I, I just wonder if you've seen any like backlash when you, when, if you talk to other leaders about the program that you've kind of initiated, if, if there's any backlash to that. Yeah. I mean, no, I, what I would say, and I'm an optimist, so I definitely think like, yes, absolutely. It's something that we can teach. Of course. I'm not going to say no, because, you know, want this world, leave this world better than how I found it, how we found it, stuff like that, you know, but it's like, I think that the key here is like, is you're a leader, you're not a leader. And I mean, yes, you can be, you'd be taught to be a leader, but a leader really just has to do with heart and like that servant leadership. And like, I have a desire to see your success just as much as like my career. That is important to me. Mm -hmm. but like, you know, it comes down to like sitting down with your employees and talking to them and like actually like hearing their side of things, hearing their perspective. If you do that and you're just, and you have a heart and, and, and you're a person that just loves people, like, and then you're going to open up and you're going to hear things that maybe you didn't think. I mean, it was like during COVID, I remember we, we, we like came out with this, like, here's a story. We like came out and we were like, you know, we're going to tell everybody we got to get vaccinated. Like everybody's got to get vaccinated. It was like in the middle of COVID. We're like, we just got to, I don't want, we don't want to get it because we just want to, you know, business was crazy, right? Everybody knows this industry was crazy. during. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we kind of wrote an email about it. Like, you know, Jacob did or whatever it is, but like the amount of people we, and, and, and we made a mistake because we just kind of, we didn't get the other perspectives mm -hmm. or I don't know what it is, but they, we heard about, oh, man, man, this might be going on. The back, it wasn't the backlash, but it was like, hey, there's some people that need to have a major problem with this. You know, there's some communities that have some major problems with this because historically what they've done with vaccines to people like this is real stuff. And so we sat down and we talked with these people and we immediately were like, this is a terrible idea. We are definitely not going to do this. It wasn't because the backlash is because like we're listening to these people's point of views and we're like, yeah, I would feel the same way if I was in your position, you know. Ray Mac is sitting over here and Greg, people that have like worked for us for 15, 20 years and telling us like, 
like their perspective on this. And we were like, oh my gosh, okay, never mind, scrap this. No, you know, definitely don't have to get vaccinated. But it was the thing that was like, just it just open it just sitting down and having the conversation you hear somebody else's perspective and all, all of a sudden you're going to get more empathy you're going to get more compassion but if you don't sit down and you don't have those conversations that's not going to happen but if you do will and we did and you know or we maybe we didn't at first but then we ended up doing it whatever it ended up working out but that was the point mm-hmm. is like sit down have the conversation if you have the conversation you sit down automatically if you're human like you're going to empathize you know you're going to have compassion with somebody else's situation and it's going to change a lot but i think that the biggest problem is we're probably not sitting down with our people and i talk to these people during interviews and i talk to other people in other companies they're like my boss never talks to me my (laughs) boss never sits down and talks to me my boss will like walk by and be like great job but like actually sitting down and talking to you about like how are you how's life what's working what's not working and like the sitting like that right there in itself i mean that's the answer i mean i'm just going to keep it simple like what else do you need if you're doing that yes you will have more compassion we need to be doing that more as leaders we don't our people can't be anonymous we have to know them we mm-hmm. absolutely have to know them and they have to know why their work matters you know and 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 the third thing, hopefully we have some type of number or some type of metric that can show them how they impact the bottom line every single day or the top line or something that they do every single day that's showing that, hey, dude, this really, what I do every single day means something to somebody or to the company. If you're doing those things, you know, probably, you know, they're going to probably like their job. Um, but if they don't know any of those things, you don't know them, they're anonymous, you never sit down and talk about them, care for them and things like that, like, they're just not going to like their job and they're going to leave. And there's, I feel like that's kind of common sense. Yeah. I love emphasizing their impact. Um, I just feel like that maybe that's not something that a leader would think to do like day to day, just to be like, Hey, by the way, like we couldn't do it without you, you know, giving Uh that person that value. Um, no, that's great. And yeah, a, a really good, uh, um, example of why it's so important to check in with your people too, just because otherwise, like you just don't know what you don't know until it's uh, too late or, you know, a decision is made or, um, et cetera. Yeah. But, yeah. um, I don't want to steal too much of your time, but I do want to ask you if, if there's a uh, one thing that you could say kind of like industry-wide, I mean, this is, this is the platform to do it, but if there's one thing that you could say to, um, leadership or the success that you've seen just within your own organization, um, you know, to, to just help get people kind of kicked into gear with not only what's coming, but what is here when it comes to people just wanting more purpose in their job, what, what would that message be? Yeah. And I mean, this is always, and I, I give, I give credit to Nick, Nick Gross, um, you know, our VP of supply chain, which every, a lot of people know him, but He's always like, he's always like, oh no, you got it. Like, tell them that it works because the numbers back it up. Show them the numbers. He just swears by that. Sometimes I forget that because he's like, he's like, you know, these guys, they're all skeptical about people first. They're skeptical about this kind of stuff. But it's like, like, I guess that that's the thing is like organically, you know, we've grown the organization almost quadrupled it and, 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 you know, EBITDA and, and earnings and so like, so it, like it works. Like, that's the thing is like, not only is it the right thing to do. And like, I'll take, I'll take people, I'll take less profit. I get it. We're not owned by private equity. You know, my mother, she owns hundred percent of the company. So we're in a different situation than a lot of people that are out there that are like driving profits. We need to increase this thing because private equity is going to sell it at three times X because that's what they got to do. I get that whole thing. But it's like, he's like, dude, show them. Nick is always like, show them the numbers. It works. Like, this is the right way of going about doing business because like that empowerment is there. And, but it's also has to be a real, it has to be authentic. But when it's real and authentic, it's coming from the top and you truly believe in this stuff, then your people go out there and they just, I mean, they just, they just knock home runs like, and they're, but they're so happy and it just works. And so it's like the numbers are also there. Like we didn't do anything other than, become a really healthy company and we called quadruple yeah. the size of a 50 year old organization um and you know and and bottom line is as healthy and balance sheet is healthier than it has ever been and it's like we didn't create any new type of it was just like no new we didn't go buy a brand new manufacturing plant or you know go out and 
you know, uh, find some new type of plastic that didn't exist. Um, we didn't do any of those things. We literally were just like, okay, we're just going to be the healthiest damn company that we can be. And that drives results. So that, that's what I say is like, man, not only that, but it's the right thing to do. Think of, I would say, I, 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 we believe this here, like so much is like business can have so much of an impact on your people's lives, on all of our lives. I mean, we have to work. It's America. We, I mean, we work our days off here in America. It's, it's we're proud of that, right? We're working eight hours, nine hours, 40 hours a week, like plus more, you know, and work shouldn't suck. We spend more time here than we do with our family. It absolutely yeah. shouldn't suck. It has to be a great place, place that fills your cup, not a place that drains you. But think of what we can do in people's lives. We can literally make this world a better place by doing this stuff. Because when people come to work, their cup is filled, not drained. And because that, like, if people love what they do, love who they do it with, feel like they have a voice, they can make an impact, make good money and have balance in their life for friends and family, then they're going to come home. They're going to go home every single day with a smile on their face. And they're going to be a better dad. They're going to be a better mom, sister, brother, friend, daughter, all those types of things, because work is a place that fills their cup. And that's the impact that you can have on every, on, on, on society. So think of if every business, instead of it was only just driving more and more and more profits, it's the only thing we cared about. We flipped it and we, we could make this world a whole lot better place. I think that's the message. And oh, by the way, it also works for the numbers and all the guys that are out there saying drive those profits. It, it all works. And so I know that we're really passionate about that here. And um, I mean, it's been it's been the journey of my life. I mean, I'm 41 now and I'm having I mean, the last five years I've had more fun. And I mean, I, I sometimes drive home with tears in my eyes just because I'm just like I just these people mean so much to me. And I'm like, I don't know what I would do without these people in my life. And and how much joy I, they, they bring to me, like all of them. So it's like, that, that would be the thing that I would like say to everybody is like, man, like you just, you just, if you turn it around and you make it more about the people and just, just, just doing that, that whole, that whole thing I've been talking about this whole time and, and less, a little bit less about just like bottom line profitability or top line revenue, the numbers will be there, but you'll put so much good into the world. No, that is so beautiful. And I just want to touch on uh, at the very beginning, you had mentioned like humility. Humility is like one of your favorite words. Mm -hmm. And I really think, I mean, one of the things that you just said was uh, we simply, we just simply made a healthy culture. And it's like how humble of a thing to, oh, we just simply, you know, we, it's really like it, it just really shows that you're so passionate about it. And, um, you know, of course, like numbers don't lie. And I, I really think that this message, um, will help a lot of organizations as, as we kind of, uh, the workforce is being redefined and things are, you know, people are wanting to go to work with a purpose. Um, and I think that you, you really beautifully, you and your whole organization really beautifully outline that. So, um, I just, I can't say thank you enough for, uh, coming on today and, sharing your knowledge with everybody and um, just really having an honest conversation about what it means to be a leader and not necessarily just a boss and really yeah. sitting down with people and um, giving them, giving them that purpose. So for sure. Well, thank you so much for so, having me. Of course. Well, thank you, Chad. I hope you have a great rest of your day Alrighty. and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. This podcast was brought to you by the International Association of Plastics Distribution. For more information on IAPD, please visit our website at www.iapd.org.